Being a virgin has its disadvantages, but you know what it advantages? It increases my power as a gamer and the power of my sponsor, Gamer Sups, which you can check out and it's fantastic flavors, which I recommend blue raspberry dragon fruit, as well as the fantastic acai blueberry flavors down there in the description. Check out the link, use code Bricky to save 10% off. And of course, any of it comes back to me because I do gain commission and that is great for me because I like cash. Also, do check out the unlisted video in the description called Why Gamer Subs. I have like a seven minute long video talking about why I like the sponsor, why I think you should check it out, why I think you should give it a shot. Give that a look, but first, it's getting a little chilly. Hello everybody, my name is Bricky, currently freezing to death because the captain forgot to recall me before the great storm. A surefire way to tell that I'm getting older is by the games I've been reviewing. As a young brick, Halo 3, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, Midnight Release at a GameStop or a Microsoft Store, those were the times. Now, we've reached the point of depressing post-apocalyptic city builder about the morality of the last city on Earth. And by God, do I love it. Frostpunk is a brutal city builder survival game created by 11-bit studios out of Warsaw, Poland, which means yes, this is another incredibly depressing Polish game, which is just, mm, love it. Frostpunk came out in 2018 to almost all positive reviews with the negative reviews mainly citing the optimization frame rate stuttering problems. Now in 2021 with multiple DLC and many patches out, Frostpunk is one of the best city builders I have ever played. It is a crushing game that combines management, city building, survival, morality, major decision making, and the worst part of them all, angry British, all into one fantastic, brutal simulator that just carries itself on so many fantastic factors. It is a gorgeous, exciting, and engrossing title that I would highly recommend to almost anybody, even to those who are not huge fans of City Builders. And with that being said, let's talk a little bit about what Frostpunk is all about. The game is set in 1886, where in an alternate history after the eruption of Krakatoa in 1883, along with many other major factors, the entire planet has seen a major global cooling. In response to this, giant generators were constructed in order to house all the population to survive during this Ice Age period of time. And that is where you take place. In the main scenario titled A New Home, you and a group of people are fleeing London from the riots and civil war, as well as the freezing cold to go find a new place to live out there in the frozen wastes. And you come across an unmanned generator in this gigantic old pit. So you go down there, start the bastard up, and that is when the game truly begins. And it starts at a just crisp negative 20 degrees Celsius. I'm so jacked up on America. Your first task is to get the generator up and running. The generator is love. The generator is life. Everything flows through the generator. Starting off, you have no buildings, no homes, so you're gonna need to build them. But to build homes and tents and such, you need wood, so you gotta go gather some wood. But don't forget about that coal though. You need to make sure the generator is still functional. Uh-oh, you sent people through the snow to go get your wood. That's not good. Now they're getting sick because of hypothermia. You need to make a medical post in order to treat them. But a medical post costs wood. And also, not anyone can just man a medical post. You need doctors for that. Don't forget about that coal though. You need food badly. You can have some people go out to hunter huts to be able to find smaller little critters and try to get food that way, but that's just raw food. You can't eat raw food. You need to cook it. So go ahead and build a cookhouse. Oh, but a cookhouse costs wood and you need people to man said cookhouse. Don't forget about that coal though. 
Steel, we need steel. We're running low on resources and we're gonna need things like coal thumpers and sawmills. We need steel for that kind of stuff. Do we, do we have steel? Is there enough steel out there? We need workshops to do research as well. And only some people can do research. We need engineers for that. Do, do we have engineers? Don't forget about that coal though. Wood, steel, coal, food. Wood, steel, coal, food. Wood, steel, coal, food. Freezing temperatures, starvation, hypothermia, sickness, death. Motivation, I think not. Discontent, you fucking know it. The Frostpunk formula is just never ending tension where the taut string of your city threatens to snap at the worst inconvenience. Was your lack of food the pair of scissors that snipped that string? Was it your lack of steel? Did you run out of coal? Was it sickness and lack of medics? What thing did you neglect and why did that make you fail? But you're a leader of people, not robots, or at least not yet. Holy shit, I'm gonna and people have needs too. That's why you have discontent and hope. You need to make sure you understand the needs of your people and of your city. If discontent rises too heavily and goes above hope, you're gonna have consequences. And consequences can lead to riots. And riots can lead to you being exiled from the city, which means you lose. Or worse. Managing your hope and discontent is as important, if not more, than managing your actual resources themselves. Luckily for you, you are the captain, and you run this city, which means you can pass laws to assist with that. You can pass laws every so often with a minor cooldown, and these things can either help you a lot more in the resource management section, or help you a lot more in the discontent and hope section. Some are things that make a lot of sense, like a cemetery. You'll be forced to build one, but that'll increase the hope of your people, or a fighting arena that'll decrease the discontent of your people. Other things can be a little bit more dubious, and some things can be, well, have a, a bit of a moral problem. Think about the children! That's a cool idea! Listen, everyone! New law is signed. Running the last city on Earth does have its restrictions, though. In a 24-hour time block, you have work and free time. On work time, it's as it sounds, they go and harvest different kinds of materials, they work at the sawmill, they work at the factory, they do all the things you tell them to do, but when their time is off, they go back and they either build buildings, if there are buildings to be built, or they sleep and do nothing, because... That's how a city runs. This entire time you're gonna be maintaining that generator. The generator is your life blood. Everything flows through that generator because the generator produces heat. The cold in Frostpunk is directly related to the possibility of your people becoming sick. The colder they are, the higher chance they have of becoming sick. And when they're sick, they can't work. If someone gets extremely sick, they might get frostbite and they might end up losing a limb and becoming an amputee. And when they're an amputee, they can't work again forever. Unless you sign perhaps the prosthetic law, but guess what? Prosthetics cost steel. Because of this, how you build your city entirely revolves around said generator. You're gonna want things like homes and medical posts to be a lot closer to the generator, where certain things like hunter's huts don't really need heating because they're going out to go hunt anyway, and you can send those damn far away. Soon though, your local deposits will run dry, which means you're going to need new buildings, and that's where the workshop comes in. The workshop is one of the best single buildings in the entire game. It is manned entirely by engineers, which is a special class of worker, and they allow you to research brand new upgrades to assist you. You're not going to win without this. That's a simple fact. You need a workshop. In fact, if you have multiple workshops, it'll also speed up the time frame of the research. This has some things that are just lifeblood, like heaters and steam hubs that allow you to take the power of the generator and push it farther out away from it to allow for little heat zones and make up for the lack of the generator's long range. There are many, many upgrades that help you out in a myriad of ways, and every single one that you pick will make you feel like you picked not the wrong one, but you wish you picked a different one at the time, because that's the balancing act with it. You'll need a way for more coal, so you're going to want a coal thumper. You'll want to insulate all of your people's homes, so you're going to want the bunkhouses. You're also going to want things like a beacon to increase the amount of scouts you got out there. Which, speaking of scouts, let's talk about scouts. Scouts, or by their scientific name, no complainus, Big Dickus, are some of the greatest giga chads in all of Frostpunk. These boys you create with a little bit of wood and a couple of your workers, and then you send them out into the frozen wastes. And guess what? They don't need to sleep. They don't ever get sick. 
and they just go out there and find stuff. Scouts go out into like negative 70 Celsius weather without a single care and without ever needing to rest. They work 24 seven. They bring back everything from coal, wood, steel, special steam cores, which you need for high level buildings and other survivors. And they bring them all back to camp. Scouts are paramount. Scouts have done everything from creating an outpost on Nikola Tesla's exploding electric city and fist fighting bears to save civilians. Scouts, you are my MVP. Sooner or later, you'll start to get things a little under control. And that's why the game throws a wrench at you. Something happens in the game that causes a whole lot of problems for your people. Discontent rises, hope falls, and eventually, you need to make a choice. And that's where the fun morality part of the game comes in. You need to give your people something. They need something to hold on to. They need a reason to keep going. So do you choose order? Do you run your city as a totalitarian regime with an iron fist through law and order and obedience? Or do you choose faith? Which is basically just order but with JC. This is one of my favorite parts of Frostpunk and also one of its few flaws. See, when you choose one of these two, say for order, for instance, it starts off at a very nice, not very problematic level. Order starts with the neighborhood watch and a couple watchtowers. You know, just to make sure things are going well, just to make sure there isn't any violence, to make sure people feel safe. Simple stuff, you know, nothing wrong with that at all. And then you can move on a little bit farther, you can get like a foreman, which is good to help people work a little bit harder. But then you get a little bit worse, you get giant agitator speakers and uh, propaganda centers and spies and sometimes beatings in order to put people into submission and sometimes you can go as far as the the new order, which is the highest of them all, where you completely take over the entire town and create a full-on totalitarian nationalist regime. Hope will never be a problem again. Not when you have an execution platform and not when hope is obedience. On the faith side, my issue is that it's basically the exact same thing as order, but with a religious twist. It starts off simple. Chapels, a couple shrines, the usual thing, maybe some morning prayer, gatherings, eh, totally fine. But then it goes worse and worse, and public penance and all that kind of crap. And then you have the new faith. It basically feels just like another totalitarian regime, but with a religious side to it. I wish they were a little bit more different. Personally, I like order a bit more, but even so, I think Faith could have used a bit more of a, of a zealotous feel to it, instead of just feeling like order with JC. I mean, I play Warhammer, I can understand a good zealotism when I see one. What makes it so fascinating is that neither of these two are, in a sense, morally bad when it starts out, because everything on the lower echelon of the law book is pretty reasonable. But when hope starts to fall, discontent starts to rise, and your city starts to be going completely out of whack, those new options seem really enticing to you, and it is insane how fast this game will turn you into a monster to keep the city alive. The rest of the game is truly a treat, and I think you should absolutely experience it, because Mother Nature <laughs> will not hold back. Hi Dad, oh, I had a question. Why is my sister's name Rose? Well, son, it's because a rose is your mother's favorite thing. So she named your sister Rose. Ah, oh, that makes sense. Thanks, Dad. No problem. Violin section of the City Must Survive song. Frostpunk really gets by on its visual and audio systems, and while the gameplay is phenomenal and the morality stuff is just absolutely interesting and great, I think that really having it being pleasurable to look at adds a whole lot to it, because city builders aren't always a very pretty game. Sometimes they are, but often it's a lot more about function over form, and for me, Frostpunk does both 
perfectly. If you look at the UI in general, the UI really does a great job at selling that kind of punky steampunk feel to it. But then certain things get added. Like whenever you see a brand new notification or an area from the scouts are being checked on and you see that kind of way the ice kind of cracks to show open the whole image and to really kind of spread open in like the weird creaking cracked ice way whenever you have any new visuals. It's really fascinating and it adds a lot of depth to the game and it gives it so much more character. Hell, even things like finishing up new research or opening up certain tabs have that kind of click, click, click steampunk style to it. Everything UI design wise feels so crisp and well made and it's one of the few things that I think is nigh perfect. And I haven't even like talked about the sound yet. Oh. So, Bricky, what I'm gathering is that Frostpunk is a fantastic game with a wonderful scenario and that you should go buy it. Damn straight. But at times, you can't find a little bit of a lack of replayability. And that is where the scenarios come in. Everything I've talked about right now is just one scenario. The main one, a new home. The game actually ships with four. The arcs are about maintaining these giant seed holders that you need to maintain their heat for while also surviving yourself. It's basically the same as the main game, except you don't get any new people. You only get extra automatons to work on everything. And you also need to protect these multiple different kinds of seed arcs by making sure they stay warm enough. It's nothing to stand out, but it's worth playing. The Refugees is interesting. This is one where you actually gain a ton of new people, but the problem with the Refugees is that you're your group has fled the high class lords in the prior city and they're going to be arriving eventually once you create your city. So now you've got the lower working class having to deal with the upper echelon lords coming to the city and possibly trying to take it over as their own. So you have to deal with the morality of that scenario and whether or not you let those those lords in. The fall of Winterhome is when you have a bullying kink. Basically, the prior ruler of Winterhome was a shithead and was killed, and the entire city burned in a massive civil war. So, you are here to clean up what he... what he... what he did. It's so tough. It's so fucking hard. The entire area has a myriad of problems. All of the homes are burnt, and you have to get rid of all of them. The generator's having problems. Everything has gone to shit. Discontent is already really high. It's like you're taking over after a horrible, horrible ruler prior. It is very, very difficult. And it throws you curveballs at every single avenue. It's a very good scenario. Easily the best of the extra scenarios. Way better than the Arcs and Refugees. But by lord, is it fucking hard. There are also two more DLCs. On the Edge and The Last Autumn. Now, On the Edge is a pretty interesting one. It actually takes place after you finish a new home, and it has you on this long side crevice and a army warehouse. And the way you work with this one is you actually communicate with local civilizations. One has food, one has wood, one has coal, and you have steel. And you trade all of your resources back and forth for the various resources there, because you can't actually get food in basically any way. So it's really interesting to have that dilemma, but it's very short and lacks any real replayability. So maybe skip that one unless you're just dying for more Frostpunk. The Last Autumn is incredible. I could probably make an entire video on The Last Autumn in its own right. I might do it. The Last Autumn is actually a prequel. It takes place before the Great Cooling, and you are running a labor force. You're working on a labor force to build one of those major generators. The Last Autumn doesn't have to worry about cold because the cold hasn't arrived yet. It's a perfectly nice temperature, but you're entirely based around running that workforce. Hope 
is not there. It's now motivation. You don't need to worry about coal for heaters. You need to worry about coal for ventilation because workplace safety is a new major factor here. People won't get sick because of the cold. They'll get sick because your workplaces are hazardous and dangerous because this is the 1880s and man was shit dangerous back then. And then you got the butting heads between the higher echelon engineers and the working class usual workers. And the two of them are constantly at each other's throats and you have to work with them to see what is the best avenue. Do you go with the engineers and you do some foremans and overseers to make sure things are getting done to specification? Or do you go on a workers union to make sure that they get all the rights that they want? Both have pluses, both have negatives, and both can get really dark. The last autumn is completely worth the money. It is incredible. It is almost as good as a new home. I think it just comes slightly short, but it's absolutely worth buying. And the morality system, unlike order and faith, engineers and workers are a lot more different. They feel a lot different. And do they get dubious? And finally, do you want more Frostpunk? Because you got endless mode which is also quite difficult. Endless mode combines all these kinds of factors and all these different kinds of twists and turns against you. Endless mode is great. I would highly recommend endless mode. Uh, it is fun to try if you are just dying for more Frostpunk, but you know, it's still just endless mode. So, you know, that's up to you. Overall, Frostpunk is an extremely engrossing management game. It combines the fantastic visuals and audio that I don't see in many city builders with a very dark, depressing steampunk vibe that is both extremely difficult and horrendously rewarding, both from the moral attitude and from that final victory that you can get if you pull it off. Thank you to my fantastic patrons and to my other members. If you want to check out some Bricky merch, I'm literally wearing one of them. This is my 36 month anniversary tee. I really like this one. You can check that out in the description. Uh, it's over at orchidate.com. To my patrons and members themselves, your support is un like unrivaled. I love all of you. Thank you so much for being a part. And I hope to see you all on the next episode when I have some good questions to answer because you guys just think you're so goddamn funny. Bye-bye.